this week, we have a pretty, pretty awesome guest um, coming up on the main show. And while we both have some fond memories watching his work, I will never, ever forget, like, being on the phone with him and talking to Dean Bahar for the first time and him getting super excited about going to the Pasadena Toy, Ex- Toy Expo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this guy, this man right here, like, I've watched him, like, through high school and into college, and I'm talking to him. And I have never felt so connected to a man I've only spoken to on the phone and never met as this guy right now. <laughs> oh, it, I couldn't agree more with you on that. And uh, for those of you who don't know Dean Bahar intimately, okay, you know, Dean Bahar is, is an actor that Joe and I and, and many of our friends have appreciated through uh, some of his his works as he first got into the acting industry, um, we've actually covered a good amount of them uh, in our mm-hmm. Trey Parker and Matt Stone history. Um, so, long story short, if you if you have listened to that, this will be kind of review. If you haven't listened to it though, uh, Dean Bahar went to the University of Colorado at Boulder, where he met Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Uh, ends up interning for them on this uh, independent film called Cannibal the Musical which you know trey parker uh and matt stone and this this crew of students funded and and made work right uh from there with snowball he would start an orgasmo uh mm-hmm. basketball um and and then even you know makes some appearances on south park uh once once that was going through season one as as far as dean Bar goes I, I actually told this to Dean specifically when we were talking to him, and I said that he kind of steals the scenes that he's in. And mm-hmm. if you if you if you've heard the term st- uh, "scene stealer" before, it is not a positive term, okay? At uh, least, which is not at least not, not for people in the industry. Like for us, yeah. like oh, steal the show. That like look at this person, we're right with it. That's how you make other people on set very angry with you. <laughs> yes. So yes. Exactly, mm-hmm. which is like as soon as I said it, I was like, "Oh shit, that's not what I'm tra- that's not what I mean, Dean." And so, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I corrected myself and I went, "Dean, I did not mean scene stealing in the traditional sense. I meant that whenever Dean is on screen, like I can't look away from him. Like he he is he 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 he's the center of attention when when he's mm-hmm. on screen. Um, and it doesn't matter what movie he's been in. Like I always have held that that feeling with him, even from." The first time I watched Cannibal the Musical, the very first time, like I saw Dean on screen, I like the, the dude's just funny. He's really funny. Yeah. He's got a presence mm-hmm. that, like, that that some actors that are in in the industry for decades can't seem to master, you know. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and Dean just just has it. And so, yeah, dude, it was really cool to uh, to not just do that phone call like you mentioned, but mm-hmm. you know, understand how Dean is is. Uh, I guess I'll just say he's like he's one of us, you know. Yes, yeah. he feels like it. As as weird as to say, like celebrities, they're just like us. Like he kind of is, though. <laughs> he really is. He is that weird, like awkward, like j- form of journalism, like TV thing, trying to convince you that that celebrities are people too. He is, in fact, a person as well as us. Um, well, that's that's the mistake a lot of people can get into is that. You know, you get so used to uh, seeing folks on TV and and like in in magazines and all that kind of stuff, and and so many journalists are concerned with not talking about the humanity of these folks. You know, they're they're working their butts off, they're doing a damn fine job, but but like there's that that whole pedestal discussion mm-hmm. where. You know, they like you, you just see it happen where like they only care about the movies and the properties that they're attached to, and they don't care anything about who they are as people, what they're mm-hmm. interested in, you know. And and that's really what what we care about on this show is is humanizing yeah. people. And and mm-hmm. and in Dean's case, yeah, it was I mean, we, we spent if, when you hear the episode, we actually spend the first like two or three minutes talking about the art he has on his walls behind yeah. him. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And and he intimately knows everything about him. And it's like, you know, I, I 
I'm not going to say that I wasn't expecting him to be as cool as he was, right? Like mm-hmm. he's, he's everything I've heard about him and, and seen in interviews with Dean, like he is so down to earth. He's such a cool dude. Um, but totally shattered all my expectations of him. Oh like he yeah. Just was, Completely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Amazing without giving too much away for uh, what's coming up later this week, we thought we would really spend some time uh, in the side stitch talking because like we we talk a lot about dean and who he is as a person and kind of like more of the him in the career as opposed to the movies he's in necessarily so today we kind of want to talk about some of our favorite movies that dean's in uh for uh for side stitch so things that he is in that i have seen that i've really enjoyed um basketball fantastic yeah. one uh <laughs> orgasmo of course and one that i was again really surprised we didn't see more of him in was galaxy quest because like you yeah. see him like getting sucked out of an airlock um in galaxy quest um and you just see him kind of like he i think he's like holding on to like a pole as the air is being sucked out of the room and that's kind of all you see of him he had uh i think at least one other scene that he he talked about where he had some pretty pretty like substantial dialogue that didn't make it to the final film and you know that's that's hollywood that's that's part of the business from what i hear because i'm not in it myself is sometimes (laughs) like you lose scenes or you lose entire like you know pilots or movies altogether because something falls through the last second and uh galaxy quest is one of those things uh that was just like fuck i love that movie absolutely love that movie mm-hmm. well and honestly uh it's it's a movie that we will cover in the future you know mm-hmm. you and i have talked about this show ever since we you know, ever since we and this is hard to even mention without getting a little yeah. choked up mm-hmm. when when you and i first talked about building this show out galaxy quest was one of those those episodes that was like like man we love galaxy quest so much and to be mm-hmm. able to speak with someone who is you know in that movie uh is is nuts and um yeah, yeah the, the 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 scenes that Dean was in in that in that movie um actually take place pretty quickly once the the actors the whole crew gets on the ship for the first time mm-hmm. um and it it involves uh them going down to engineering where Tony Shalhoub's character is asked to answer some questions about the beryllium sphere and do a walk of engineering right yeah um mm-hmm. So yeah, Dean Bahar plays part of the engineering crew that's there, and uh, he actually mentions in in our episode later this week that um, yeah, his dialogue was cut. He had mm-hmm. speaking lines, and they unfortunately cut it due to time or you know whatever it was they did. Yeah, um, he actually says some pretty uh, interesting stuff in this scene because he actually talks about like the chemical makeup of the beryllium sphere, mm-hmm. why their calibration isn't working properly. And so, like, he has to say some fairly complicated things about it in a very short period of time. And, like, he's he's troubleshooting, uh, like, what Tony Shalhoub's character needs to do. Mm-hmm. Well, you would know as well as I do that, like, all of these aliens only know what they know based off of the quote-unquote the TV show, documents. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. so, like, the entire crew, all the engineering, all of the folks that were the actors of the show, like, they're all watching Dean Bahar. Mm-hmm. Try to tell them like this is what we should do with the brilliant sphere and why it isn't working. Um, and so uh, it, it's it's on the deleted scenes. Uh, yep. On on pretty much every edition of mm-hmm. of this movie. So if you yeah. have so it, if you own home, it, go yeah. watch it. Yeah, you can see Tian in here. Um, yeah. And yeah, go check it out. Not without gushing over the movie too much because, like you said, we're we're going to do an episode fully just dedicated to Galaxy Galaxy Quest. Um, eventually if you're not familiar with galaxy quest it is a spoof movie of star trek now when i use that term spoof i'm going to put an asterisk behind it because when you think of spoof movies i think of things like scary movie or not another teen movie or superhero movie and these are things that basically take certain tropes or certain scenes from these other from like source material and then they they give it almost like a like a mad magazine caricature of of what it was and it's over the top it's meant to be it's lampooned exactly and galaxy quest doesn't do that 
Instead, what it does is it plays off of the idea of like, you know, when we broadcast TV shows, the signal doesn't stop on Earth. It just keeps going so yeah. that um, you could say potentially aliens on a far off different planet eventually we'll get this, like hundreds of years later we'll get what we played in the 60s so that's what the show yeah. kind of goes off of is these are now characters in the early 2000s these are actors and actresses in the early 2000s whose show was done in the 60s called galaxy quest and it's very much the campy old 1960s star trek and yeah. you see a lot of the characters um like they, they start by going to conventions and doing um like other odd appearances and it's very much not necessarily making fun of what star trek is but was showing and poking fun of what star trek, star trek was behind the scenes more than anything else yeah and yeah, they it, do it, it in such a wonderful way that it's such a great movie yeah it, even though they're they're not telling the exact story of what happens mm -hmm. to the real actors they they capture it extremely well, they which do. is uh, which is great. So it's just a really great original concept that I'm 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 happy that Dean was a part of. Unfortunate mm -hmm. that they had to cut the the stuff, but you can find it; it's out there. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, we we didn't go into a ton of this with with Dean. We did talk about mm -hmm. his uh, relationship with Sam Macaroni, or at that time, his name was Sam Macaron, I, I believe, or Macaron. However Macaron? He it back okay. Yeah. Macaron, yeah. Macaron, yeah. Chacaron, Macaron. <laughs> Chacaron. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so Sam Macaroni, though, I mean, he, he's, he's actually been doing quite a few different films uh, that, that have to do with, like, I, I don't want to call them fan films. That's not really the, the right term with it. Um, but he's actually done some films that are in in the vein of what feel like fan films like they do involve like prop like ips like star wars mm -hmm. um i got i think he even did um oh he did like a uh an origin story on the boondock saints film Ooh. um so i mean he's so he so him and and dian uh and dian mentions this too that they meant you know a little bit after he got to la um mm -hmm. and so that's where they would actually get some notoriety for their internet series because they did uh roommates the series together which um mm -hmm. was like one of the first like viral videos you know back when new Numa guy was still brand new um <laughs> before you yeah. could make money on the internet <laughs> yeah yeah for those of you that aren't um if you're not a millennial that remembers the 80s this may be lost on you but there was a time when putting a video on the internet cost you money for people to actually watch it and you'd have to watch <laughs> per play. <laughs> so uh, roommates, the series was like that. Uh, Dimwitz was also another series that him and Sam Macaroni did together. Um, and so it, it, the thing about DN is that like, we didn't just call him the Vitru DN man as a joke on Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian man. Mm -hmm we're being completely honest about that because he didn't just stop with acting. And I think that's where like folks that just may remember him for basketball or, mm -hmm. you know, orgasmo, right? Like, like if you only remember him for that, like you're just totally missing out on some of these series he's done. Uh, he's been in a, a, a bunch of um, like different, like various shorts throughout the years that he's been mm -hmm. a part of. Um, and, and he's done some independent films on top of that too, that he kind of gets into as well. Like once again, we're not trying to take away <laughs> all of the value of the show. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the coolest things about, about him that, um, that we talked about on our intro call with him was the fact that he was actually a part of the walking dead universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Which I had no idea. I was complaining. This was, because it was early Walking Dead too, which is when everyone was hooked on it. Like I know, as the show goes on, um, it's in what it's its tenth and final season now. It is so yeah. hard to keep a show going for that long and keep it like fresh and new and and well made. So, to anyone, any actor, actresses, actress who has been in like a, a like a, a like a, a show that's gone more than five seasons, like grid for you like holy shit like if you could keep it going that long great so but going back to dean here like yeah he was in walking dead 
in booming Walking Dead territory when it was like, oh my gosh, this hasn't been done before. This is going to be great. Well, early Walking Dead was known for these these shorts. They did shorts mm-hmm. for the very first episodes where like, because we were all, I mean, you, you know how big of a fan I am of Walking Dead. I, I've Oh, yes. I've read. I read all the comics like before the show was a thing. Like I was one of those guys that read it before it was cool, mm-hmm. <laughs> hipster style with my <laughs> with my my flannel and my uh, my dark rim glasses. Um, but I, I but I read the comics, and so when the when the show came out and Frank Darabont was attached, you know, I was like, oh man, like like they're gonna do this right, they're gonna do this well. Um, and unfortunately, you know, Darabont's kind of a bag of cats, and AMC yeah. is doing their own thing, mm-hmm. but. In that first season of the show, everybody was like, "Man, I want to consume as much of The Walking Dead as I possibly can," and and these shorts did a, a lot of good to kind of bridge gaps between narratives or short stories that they didn't want to tell because they didn't have enough time during the main show, right? Mm-hmm. So, one of the stories that they did tell was the bicycle girl, quote unquote, who's in episode one. And I think we may have even you've if you guys have listened to this show, you've heard me say this way too many times. But you know, Rick points his gun <laughs> at this girl in the first episode and he says, Sorry this happened to you, and then shoots her with his, you know, with his his uh big iron on his hip. And uh so Dean short takes place because he's the zombie that turns bicycle girl into a zombie. Yeah, like like he's the zombie who straight up like causes her to become what she does. And so if you've never watched one of these shorts, seriously, start watching them. If if you're a walking dead fan, you didn't see these, they did these shorts. I'm pretty sure they kept doing them for at least the first like three or four seasons. Um, There's a lot of cool choices that they make with these that kind of fill in some gaps and kind of carry along. But this one was really cool. And, And we've actually even posted this on our, on our Twitter and Instagram with the, the photo of Dean as a walker. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's terrifying. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet. Um, but yeah, you know what I, the, I think the biggest takeaway I had from talking with Dean or one of the, one of I had many takeaways here was that for comedic actors to make a shift in the roles they take, mm-hmm. you know, for, for some people that's a very difficult process and they, Sometimes you're not even really sure if they've succeeded there, but Dean did. I mean, he, he actually shifted taking some more serious roles, which we do talk about with uh, the murders of Brandywine theater. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get a chance to mention Homestead, which is a, a short film that he also stars in, um, which is another good performance from, from the perspective of like, you've known him for comedy, but watch, watch what he can do with a serious role too. Um, I don't, I don't mean serious role in like the opportunity. I just mean in like, <laughs> yeah, more dramatic know, the, role. Not... Yeah. Dramatic role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dramatic role. So that, that was something that, um, that like being a fan of his and seeing him go from, you know, from comedic films where he mentions he does a lot of ad lib, right? Like mm-hmm. you've done some ad lib and, and everything. And then seeing him take that, that preparation, that ability and doing some of these other roles, it's like, it's like, man, like I, I, I want to broadcast as much as I can. I want to introduce more people to this mm-hmm. because if you, if you only know him for one or two things, like keep watching, he's doing some like great yeah. stuff here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, it was, it was just fantastic to kind of break all that down with him. But, um, and, and this isn't something we have a ton of knowledge on, but, just the idea of working with Guillermo del Toro on Nightmare Alley. And... Oh my gosh, that's be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh mm-hmm. God, that's that, that's just that just sounds like such a cool journey, a cool thing to be involved with. And oh, it does. Yeah, I mean, because like I just think like when obviously I've never been in a film. I've I've been um, I've done some like small local theater stuff, and having a director with a vision and good direction and just like a keen attention for detail to really like tell you what to do and where to go with a scene. It means so much. And I can only imagine what working with Guillermo del Toro would, would, would be like, because I mean, at least again, like my, 
one of my favorite things uh, that he has done is Pacific Rim, and I remember watching like the the extra commentary for it, and this guy and his like his want for that film, like him saying like, okay, so these are giant robots, but they have to move a specific way. Everything they do has to have actual weight and have a certain feel to them. And it's the same with the giant monsters too. Like we have to remember, it's not just them screaming they're you know seven stories high and screaming so what will that do to their body what does it do to the surrounding their surroundings and he thinks about all of these little things going into his movie so i can only imagine like how amazing they have to be able to work with him and him to have that much attention for every single character on the screen at all times yeah which which gives you even more confidence in what you mm -hmm. know this this remake of like a 60s or was it 50s i think it's, I think it's a 50s film i think it's film. a 50s film yeah mm -hmm. yeah it just oh it, it gets me amped up for what's gonna what's gonna be in this because um we'll let dn tell the stories but mm -hmm. you know there, there's a lot of cool things from the set that he mentions and and then just the the involvement in in the movie and uh for those of you that follow his social media stuff too he does share some photos from not from the set but from like the uh the behind the scenes stuff and um so really looking forward to seeing what happens with with that movie um and uh yeah it sounds like it's going to be a fun mm -hmm. a fun twist whatever it is uh so <laughs> looking forward to that <laughs> um but yeah yeah i I think if if folks go back um, and start to explore the catalog a little bit more, you're going to see a lot of fun stuff in there. Um, the other one that he mentions briefly, uh, you know, being involved with Sam Macaron or Macaroni, however you want to pronounce, mm -hmm. uh, was National Lampoon's TV the movie. Yeah. Um, he. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do talk about that one uh, mm -hmm. and. That movie actually involves uh, quite a few folks from Jackasses. I was going to say, yeah. Mentioned. Yep, because I mean, what, Steve-O's yeah. in there. Um, and so is, yeah, is, Preston. is Bam in there? Uh, no. I don't think Bam's so there, from, no. What I, from what I remember, it was Steve-O, Preston Lacey. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Wee Man or, or Jason Acuna. And then uh, Chris Pontius. Chris Pontius yep. was in there, too. So, so you've got that. Uh, and then they parody a lot of stuff at the time that was popular. So mm -hmm. I remember that, uh, like they make fun of cribs, they make fun of cops, um, <laughs> got fear factor, mm -hmm. you know, like oh, there's a lot man. of, <laughs> yeah. a lot of like, a lot of the early, like trashy fun reality TV, like the original stuff that was really out there. Um, this, yeah, this goes into, mm-hmm. Well, and then if you want to stick around for like their six million dollar man parody, uh, Miami Vice, that's also there. So, I mean, there, there's there's oh, a lot of good man. stuff in there. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty funny. It's kind of like a time capsule for like, uh, well, basically the times that you and I were in in yeah. uh, you know late mm -hmm. high school, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I, man, I think even Danny Trejo is in there. I could see that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's uh, Lee Majors is in there too. So, oh boy there's a lot of people in that movie uh mm -hmm. surprisingly um but either way if you haven't checked it out like seriously just just take a deep dive in <laughs> some of the work you're involved yeah. with there's a lot of mm -hmm. fun stuff in there yeah um, and i haven't i haven't seen all of tv the movie and it makes me want to go back and watch it now especially the six i'm interested to see what they do with the six million dollar man because i don't one of my favorite like takes on the six million dollar man actually came from venture brothers which i don't think you were a big watcher of <laughs> um <sighs> I, I did watch uh, some Venture Brothers, but mm -hmm. that that largely involved friends that typically we were either on our way to drink or we mm -hmm. were, you know, recovering from drinking. So I was usually hung over watching Venture Brothers. Gotcha. Not usually yeah. wasn't mm -hmm. watching it brand new, you know, or anything like that. But yep. Well, maybe um, when Chelsea gets back, she, we we were, we we definitely watched a lot of Venture Brothers in college. Um, but one 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 line from that before we move on back to Dean, I always remember there's a six million dollar man episode, and we'll get everything too much into that. Uh, but when you meet the six million dollar man in there, and he is the the one from the TV series, 
he he's like living in the woods as a recluse and they're like what are you doing here you're the bionic man he's like yeah of course they did they made me bigger faster stronger uh but then they wanted to make me pay it all back <laughs> and i couldn't <laughs> so he's like living in the woods uh and i just lost my mind he's like yeah they expected me to pay this six million dollars back <laughs> who has that money lying around um yeah <laughs> that remind, reminds me of uh of the simpsons when marge is on jeopardy and she like you know goes into debt and then alex trebek tells her like you know hey the money that you lost on jeopardy you have to pay back <laughs> 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 oh uh, alex to break well uh, rest in uh, peace man never yeah rest, uh, rest gone rest too peace, soon sir. but yeah but okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah but but speaking of but we're talking about folks who are still living and yeah seriously like obviously we, we've thanked ian quite a bit for his time but mm -hmm. we we can't thank him enough and definitely take a look at at some of the projects he's involved with these days because it's not just acting. We put it in all of our, you know, all of our uh, posts about this. I mean, he's he's got stuff he's working on as far as writing goes. He's got a screenplay mm -hmm. he's he's putting together, which um, we do talk a little bit about that, but not not too much, just mm -hmm. just enough because it's still something he hasn't released yet. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's gotten behind the camera. I mean, good mm -hmm. lord, the guys the guys just doing so much with with uh, with film, and and you can tell how passionate he is about it. So looking forward to sharing this one with you all.